Rome is one of the most romantic cities in the world, and without a doubt, it puts the Rome in romance. From its ancient ruins and fountains to its winding and narrow cobblestone streets, it is hard not to be seduced by this city. On my last day in Rome, I decided to venture out from the historic center to see what life was like outside the city walls. As I normally do for my final day, I head to a residential market. Oh, e porchetta. Look at that prosciutto. Afterwards, a nice stroll that usually ends with drink and a view. It's almost like a cross between wine and beer. Very interesting. Mmm. And then on to a very special dinner. Melt in your mouth. The perfect way to say, Arrivederci Roma. Felice! One of the best ways to feel a city is to get outside of it, to go into the local neighborhoods and be amongst the locals with no tourists in sight. Starting out from the Colosseum, I headed out for a nice walk to Testaccio. Going to a grocery store in a local residential area is one of the best ways to capture the essence of the culture. I cannot wait to check out Testaccio Market to truly get the vibe of this area. Stepping into Mercato Testaccio, I immediately felt as if I lived there. It was mesmerizing. People shopping for fresh fruits and vegetables, clothing for their kids, and of course, some food to take home for dinner. Turning the corner, an enormous prosciutto practically slapped me in the face. Buongiorno. In my very broken Italian. Yeah, do it. Thank you, Google Translate. <laughs> Americano. <laughs> I ordered some prosciutto. Perfecto. Like a kid on Christmas, my eyes lit up as I noticed the head cheese in porchetta. Oh, and the skin? Unbelievable to have access to these fresh foods every day. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. To balance out all the meat that I bought, I thought a little fruit would be good. And feeling a little bit like James and the giant peach, I came across what had to be the biggest peach I've ever seen. Look at the size of this peach. The peach was even washed for me to eat while I shopped. Grazie mille. Stall after stall, this is what local life was like. It was real. All right. I even found a small food court to enjoy my delicious purchases. The coup de gras for me. Look at that prosciutto. The prosciutto was like candy, thinly cut, slightly salty, and oh so good the absolute best I've ever had. The fat is light and buttery. The meat is so juicy and tender. It's really good. The head cheese, made from the head of a pig, including the feet and butt, was delicious. If you've had corned beef, that is exactly what this tastes like. So don't let the texture turn you away. It's phenomenal. This reminds me of what we would call um, in my family, gelatine, which is basically a head cheese with a lot of jelly around it. But the jewel at this table was the homemade porchetta, an Italian specialty. And I want to look for a super juicy piece. A pork roll made from the belly of the pig, seasoned with salt, pepper, garlic, a little fennel powder, some olive oil and hot pepper seeds, rolled together and then fired up on a rotisserie mm or in the oven with a bit of white wine. Mmm, it's a thumbs up at Mercato Testaccio. For drinks with a view, I decided to check out the rooftop bar at Hotel Raphael, and it did not disappoint. The view was spectacular. You can see St. Pete's Novum behind me, which is a beautiful cathedral. You see the monument of the Victor Emmanuel in the distance. This is absolutely a mesmerizing terrace, and it has absolutely every element 
of Rome seduction captured right here. For my drink, I decided to try something a little bit more on the unusual side. A glass of orange wine from Tuscany. Beautiful color. Orange wine is really orange. It's like amber and honey in color. It's basically a white wine where the grape skins are macerated with the grapes. And this is not typical for white wine, but it is the process used to make red wine. And so keeping the grape skins and seeds together with the white grapes, in this case, a Malvasia grape, macerating them together is what produces the orange color during the fermentation process, which can take anywhere from four days to one year. The resulting color can then range anywhere from a light amber to a dark pink. It's almost like a cross between wine and beer, as if it was combined together. And I know that sounds a little wonky, but it actually works. All night. After a quick wardrobe change, it was time for dinner. And as the morning began, I'm heading back to Testaccio, into the local scene for one of the best trattorias in all of Rome, Da Felice. And yes, that is my last name, so it has to be good, right? Since 1936, Felice has been serving up authentic local Roman cuisine. And from what I understand, the pastas don't get any better. Their most notable dish, the one they're known for all over the city is the iconic Roman pasta, cacio e pepe, and that is exactly what I'm coming for. Upon entering Felice, I felt immediately like family, and I guess I am somewhere down the line. The trattoria was lined with whitewashed brick walls, a classic black and white checkered floor, and the staff with the smile from ear to ear. Our server, Antonella, was over the top, just like the food. Antonella! <laughs> Ordering in Italy is always an adventure. And when language gets in the way, order everything, or at least what sounds good. For the first course, or in Italian, il primo, the pasta course, I got the cacio e pepe, carbonara, and bucatini. These are roast lamb, this fashion. Okay. Very, very good. Omibos. For the second course, or in Italian, il secondo, I got the tripe, or tripa, lamb, veal, and the house meatballs. To get the evening started, Angie, Felice's incredible sommelier, recommended a Montepulciano called Ditti Rambus by producer Marco Carpinetti, an organic winery in the Lazio region just south of Rome. It was a delicious red with hints of tobacco and plum, and it had a powdery finish. And now for the dish I've been waiting for, the cacio e pepe, literally meaning cheese and pepper. The pasta is a tonarelli, like a thick cut spaghetti, simply prepared with pasta water, salt, and cracked black pepper, and then completely covered in pecorino romano. From, you guessed it, Rome. The pecorino romano, the cracked black peppercorns, it is fabulous. And I love every bite. Fantastico. Molto bene. My next pasta was the house ravioli felice, a homemade ravioli noodle stuffed with ricotta, fresh basil, mint, oregano, marjoram, and thyme. You can smell all those spices. It is pungent. It is very fragrant. Mmm, the sage. I can smell the sage and the marjoram. It was so good. This is so fresh. It's like walking through my garden at home with all of the fresh herbs 
right here in this pasta. Outstanding. And now the carbonara. The beautiful crispy bacon. Again, Pecorino Romano. We're in Lazio. We are in Roma. And of course, the spaghetti. And you can see how beautifully rich and uh, gooey this sauce is. It looks so good. Mm. <laughs> my last pasta was one of my personal favorites. The bucatini alla amatriciana. Thick cut hollow spaghetti like noodles tossed with a robust red sauce. Simply prepared with olive oil, sauteed onions, pecorino romano, black pepper, and chilies. And the most important ingredient of all is the giancalo, which is the pork jowl, the jowls of the pig, which give it intense flavor. Believe it or not, you can get this back home if you go to a true, good uh, deli or butcher, they will have the giancalo. And you need to use it. Don't cheat and skimp with the bacon. You want to get the good stuff. For the second course, Angie switched me to a full-bodied 2010 Cabernet Montepulciano blend from the Marque region, Esperanto Ofida Rosa, from producer Chu Chu in the town of Ofida along the Adriatic Sea, just north of Rome. Ooh, yeah. Very good. The main course has arrived, a veal salt in bocca, a Roman specialty, simply prepared by sauteing veal cutlets and then layering them with prosciutto and fresh sage, topping with a buttery, lemony pan sauce. So tender and bright. The prosciutto gives the salt in bocca the perfect saltiness. The veal is pounded very, very thin, super tender. The sauce has some nice bright lemon juice in it. Fabulous. Next, house-made veal meatballs in a tomato sauce. Perfectly pink on the inside, and fork tender. Melts in your mouth. It is so moist, so tender. And then there was lamb, roast lamb, simply roasted with sea salt and rosemary, and then topped with golden potatoes, roasted with the pan drippings. It was beyond fabulous. And you always want to go right in by the bone. Why? Because that is where all the flavor is. A little rosemary, lightly salted, lightly peppered. The meat is speaking for itself tonight. And that's all that needs to be said. The final course was tripa, or tripe, a traditional Roman specialty, enjoyed on Saturdays in ancient times in Rome. Tripe is the stomach lining of a cow served as a soup. Like white coral in appearance and squishy to the bite, it was beautifully braised and served with a light tomato puree and then topped with, of course, Pecorino Romano. It is fantastic. Dinner was incredible. And for dessert, a house-made tiramisu. But not before my crew pulled yet another birthday fast one on me. Chocolate on top, whipped cream, and chunks of chocolate fudge. What a twist on the classic. A sweet ending to a perfect evening. This has been the best evening, and uh, if you want to really experience Rome, if you want a taste of Rome, get out of the city, go into the burbs, get with the people, get out of the tourist lines, taste Rome. As a parting token, how could I not ask for one of the aprons with the name Felice on it? And like family, Alex came over and signed the apron commemorating our time together at Felice. And yes, I have it at home in my kitchen closet. This was one of the best and most memorable meals of my life. Beyond the absolute perfection of each course, Alex, Antonella, and Angie treated me like and made me feel like family. I did not want to leave. I don't want to leave. Rome, you've stolen my heart. Felice!
down tonight.